Hi there, welcome to the Visual ModFlow Flex video training series. My name is Braden McNeil and I'm the lead software trainer here at Waterloo Hydrogeologic. In this video I'll review the available methods for assigning property values within Visual ModFlow Flex. Please note that this video focuses on the numerical modeling approach. Assigning properties during the conceptual modeling workflow is discussed in a separate video. After generating a grid in Visual ModFlow Flex, you'll arrive at the Define Properties workflow step. This is where you define the flow and transport properties which will be applied to your model. This is the first workflow step which includes a flex viewer which allows you to review your model in both layer row and three layer row column and 3D views all at once. But for this video I'm going to be working in the layer view. Please note that when you first arrive at the define properties workflow step, all of the property arrays should be a single uniform value throughout the model domain. The single uniform values are the default property values which were specified during the define modeling objectives workflow step. Now that we're on the define properties step, we can begin introducing heterogeneous property values to our grid. To the left of the viewer, you'll notice a toolbox with several menus. The first menu under the toolbox allows you to select from the available property groups. The available flow property groups include conductivity, which includes longitudinal, lateral, and vertical conductivities, or KX, KY, and KZ. The storage property group, which includes specific yield, specific storage, effective and total porosities, and the initial head group. When working with transport models, additional property groups will be available including dispersion parameters, initial parameter concentrations, and potentially additional model parameters. The specific model parameters required as part of each simulation is defined by the retardation and reaction modules selected during the Define Modeling Objectives workflow step. The second drop-down menu under the toolbox allows you to determine how these property values will be displayed. For each prop parameter group, you can choose to render by zones or by a selected attribute. Based on your selection, the color rendering in the views will change. As you can see here, the conductivity property group is currently being displayed by zone, with all of layer 1 belonging to property zone 1. For demonstration purposes, I have assigned conductivities in layer 2 as a distributed array. If I update the renderer to display KX values and go to layer 2, we can see that this layer has a range of conductivity values assigned to it. In either case, a legend is provided in, under the toolbox to help you identify the rendered values, whether they be property zones or attribute values. Also note that a number of cell properties are displayed below the flex viewer. You can customize which property values appear by clicking on the settings button. The third menu under the toolbox provides you with several options on how to assign cells to new or existing property zones. All property groups can be assigned using the same set of tools which are shown here. The single option allows the user to manually select any number of individual cells to be assigned to an existing or new property zone. Simply select the cells you're interested in reassigning, click finish under the toolbox, and the new property zone window will open up. I'm going to close this window for now just so that we can demonstrate some of the other methods. The polyline or polygon option allows you to draw a new polyline or polygon object to de define the geographic extents of a new property zone. To draw a polygon or polyline simply left click to create vertices and then double click to terminate the new polyline or polygon. Then click finish under the toolbox to finalize the new object. Again, the new property zone window will open up. The define entire layer row or column option allows the user to define a new property zone based on the active view. In this case, all of layer 1 would be assigned to a new or existing property zone. Finally, you may use an existing data object to define the geographic extents of a new property zone. This allows you to use points, polygon, or polyline data objects from the data tree to define the extents of the new property zone. When this option is selected, the new property zone windows open up, and you can select a points, polygon, or polyline data object from the data tree, and then load it into the new property zone window using the blue arrow button at the top right. In this case, I'm using a polygon data object, which delineates, delineates the edges of the pro client property uh, or the pink line shown in the viewer window. Please note that many of these same methods can be applied during other steps in the modeling process, including assigning boundary conditions, observation data, mod path particles, and zone budget zones. 
Once the location of the new property zone has been defined using one of the methods just discussed, you'll arrive at the following window. The new property zone window allows you to, deter to, to, to determine whether to create a new property zone or to add the selected cells to an existing property zone. This is done using the buttons at the top right of the window. Use the arrow buttons to select, select an existing property zone or click the new button to generate a new property zone. At this stage you'll also determine the vertical extents of the new property zone. The vertical extents of the property zone can be defined based on a selection of model layers or you can simply assign the property zone between available surface data objects. Finally, the distribution of property values within a zone must be assigned. Several methods are available for assigning property values and they're all listed in the drop-down menus under the method column. The constant value method is selected by default for each parameter and allows you to specify a spatially constant value for that parameter. The use surface method allows you to use an existing surface data object to define spatially variable attribute values. This is ideal if you have a surfer or Esri grid file containing parameter values. It's also possible to assign parameter values based on 3D gridded data, which can be helpful if you need to assign properties based on the results of a previous model run. For example, assigning initial concentrations based on the results of a previous transport model. Finally, it's possible to assign property values using shapefile data. This is helpful if there are several subregions within your property zone that have different property values. In this case, the attribute data from each individual polygon contained within the shapefile will be used in the appropriate cells. To, de to demonstrate, I'll use a surface data object which contains distributed conductivity values. Simply load it in using the blue arrow button under the object column. Once the values have been assigned to the property zone, click OK to finalize the process. You should then see the new property zone in the Flex Viewer. Once again, if I render the conductivity property group by parameter values, you can see that the new property zone has a range of conductivity values assigned throughout that zone. At this stage, you can click the Edit button to load the Edit Property window. This displays the cell-by-cell -cell values for the available property zones, allowing you to review your inputs and make any necessary changes. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more Visual ModFlow Flex training videos. The next video in the series will explain the different ways that boundary conditions can be applied to your model. For additional training resources, including user manuals and free tutorials, please visit the Visual ModFlow Flex support page on our website. A link is provided in the video description.